big boost you could drive one of these. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Considering that this car is an incredibly rare sight on the road, one of my closest friends first born has a toy version of my new car. He even had a Lotus before I did. But the whole time Kaysen was with the car, he could not stop smiling. And that's the theme with the Amira, especially in the flesh. People absolutely love it. The interior is pretty well put together and the quality of the materials used are generally quite high. There are also some really nice design touches around the cabin. But my two favourites? Well, the exposed gear shift linkage, which I've only ever seen on the Lotus Exige, which I thought was a track car, and the Pagani supercar, but that's something else altogether. The other thing is a supercharger bypass valve on the engine, which moves under throttle. It looks so cool in your rear view mirror. And yes, I had to ask Lotus why it was cool. So you might wonder, why am I keeping my mirror in the UK for its first road trip? Why am I not taking it abroad? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Modern cars are now more powerful and efficient than ever before. High performance cars especially might require a running in period. The main part of running in a car is to drive it carefully and smoothly for the first thousand miles or so to help better the engine, the brakes and other mechanical components and their mirror is no different. These are the instructions that I found in the Lotus owner's manual. If you do ignore the running in recommendations and drive your car hard or flat out straight away and something goes wrong later down the line, Lotus may not cover it. Just for comparison, as I've owned a couple, BMW's M cars require their cars to be taken to a service centre and have the oil changed after 1200 miles and it does invalidate the warranty if you don't do that. All of these instructions and taking your car in for a service so soon after collection might come across to some as an inconvenience but I just look at it as a way of getting to know my car before I can really try and get the maximum out of it. Before I start my longer European trips, I wanted to find somewhere in the UK that gives me those low rev, high speed runs, and also those country lanes. Because of that, I decided to take the car to Wales. I think it's a perfect blend of motorway miles to reach those more exciting roads. When I say exciting roads, <laughs> I mean exciting roads. And secondly, it just gives me that bit more peace of mind that if anything does go wrong or anything needs looking at, I'm in the UK, I will have access to a Lotus Centre. You never know, British engineering does have its drawbacks. I'm pretty sure all modern cars have some form of sports mode you can select. The Amiras works really well and I like the fact that the display actually changes rather than just goes red or yellow. You can even hear the engine become loud on idle when you select sport or track. It's a really immersive experience. It's like the car's telling you, I'm ready to go. The journey begins, and after racking up some motorway miles on the M4, the highlights of nostalgic car spotting include a 1987 Ford Capri and the first generation TVR Griffith. That leads us to the only stop for Wales. We're coming close to arriving at Cheddar Gorge. It's like a train driver. Cheddar Gorge is a limestone gorge in a village in Somerset where Britain's oldest skeleton was found in the early 1900s, uh, Cheddar Man he's referred to as, and uh, he was estimated to be over 9,000 years old, so yeah, we've heard some cool driving roads around here as well, so let's see what we can find. Wow, what a road this is. It's flooded full of cars and it's a Sunday, but wow, this road's empty. B3135. Cheddar is the largest of the 14 gorges in the UK and every turn you make in a car gives you a spectacular view. I see you looking back my man, she is beautiful right? Genuinely, this wasn't planned. Spot the white beer F-Type passing by. Let me know in the comments below which one you think sounds better. Are you sure about that? So as I continue further across from the English border, I'm entering the Brecon Beacons, which is the second largest national park in Wales. 
I'm at the mountain pass I've been waiting for the whole trip, the Black Mountain Road. It's located on the western part of the Brecon Beacons and as soon as you see an average speed camera, you know you're on a serious bit of tarmac. It's got tight and fast sections, incredible scenery and some great hairpins. I mean, look at this. As I pull over to take a break and absorb all of the scenery around me, I'm distracted. I see that hairpin, don't worry. I'm sure petrol heads will know when you find the right bit of road, sometimes you've just got to do it again and again. I head to Snowdonia National Park, which houses Mount Snowdon, the highest mountain in England and Wales, at over a thousand metres above sea level. I'm not sure at what age that I associated Wales with sheep, but it's been synonymous for a long time. There are actually more sheep than people in Wales. I think it's three to one. There are reasons for this, but this isn't a nature channel, so let's leave that for now. It really is a strange feeling driving through clouds, particularly upon approach. I've only done it on a few occasions and I did need to check whether it was fog or a cloud inversion. It seems that fog only appears at low altitude and this road in Snowdonia is over a thousand feet above sea level. Clanberis and Penna Pass are the two roads I went up and I found it so peaceful. Speaking of peace, I need to get some rest. We go again in the morning. The next morning, after a cold start, I head back towards England, albeit with a couple of important stops. As lightly hinted in my last two videos, and for those who know me, football has always been a part of my life since a young age. I haven't been able to play it myself to the highest level, but I've met some great people through playing and also going to watch games at various places across the UK and Europe. As part of BHP tours, I plan to stop off at various football grounds during my road trips to try and bring you some footage and unique history about some of these clubs. A bit of nostalgia, should we say. First stop, you ask? Wrexham, one of the oldest clubs in the world. So it's actually the third oldest in the world and obviously the oldest in Wales. I did always wonder though, why Wrexham, Swansea and Cardiff all in the English Football League? And the answer is, is that they were founded before the Welsh Premier League was founded in 92. Wrexham have played at the race course since 1864, that's some innings that, and were founded one year after the FA first met up to write the laws of the game we know and love today. They flirted with the lower league for years, but have a great history in the FA Cup famously beating Arsenal in a third round tie in 1992 and also in Europe, getting to the quarterfinals of the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1975. Hollywood movie star Ryan Reynolds and actor Rob McElhenney, I think I got that right, bought AFC Wrexham in 2020 and they've gone from strength to strength, recently winning promotion to the Football League after a lengthy absence. They even managed to pry ex-Man United and England goalkeeper Ben Foster out of retirement to help them in the process. Onwards and upwards. Wrexham, Cardiff, Swansea and Newport aren't in the Welsh division. Is there a dominant force? There certainly is. They currently go by the name of the New Saints or TNS, previously known as Total Network Solutions and they hold a record 15 league titles. They even get to qualify for Europe every time they win the league. There is an ongoing debate, however, on whether they should be playing in Wales as their ground is actually across the border in Shropshire. After navigating myself back from North Wales through the Midlands motorway system, I start to reflect on a great first trip in the Amira, seeing some beautiful British scenery while starting that unique bond with my new car. This trip, though, was a build-up to a really, really special one. I'm going to be driving my new Amira to Spain. I can't wait! 
you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed me running in my new mirror throughout Wales. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and click like on the video. See you in a couple of weeks for my Spanish adventure. Vamos! <laughs>